Hello everyone, this is Nidhi here. In this video, I will tell you how to do the Terraform deployments using GitHub Actions. So we will be creating a AWS resource like ECS cluster. We will have the Terraform code for that. And then we will see how we can use the GitHub Actions or create the GitHub workflow to do the Terraform initialization, check the plan, and then actually do your changes on the AWS account. So for that, first I have this repository that I have created Terraform deploy using GitHub Actions. And uh, here you can see I have the main.tf file. This is very simple file. It has just ECS cluster resource. You can have as per your need, whatever you want to create on AWS. So this is I am creating ECS cluster and I am using the variables and according to the environments, these variables will change. And to use the variables, you can have first this variable file also where you can define all the variables which you need for your project. And now how to manage the variables according to the environments, right? So for that, this is how I'll manage. You can have test, prod, UAT, or how many environments you have, you can manage it like that. And so if I go to test folder here, you can see I'm using the terraform.tf vars file. And here you can provide the variables values according to your environments. So this is how you can manage it, having a same code and passing the different variables according to the environment. So, so this is the Terraform var files and this is the same in the prod also. And here I have just changed the environment to prod. Now the next thing in the Terraform is how you want to manage the remote state bucket, right? Generally when we run it locally, it creates the Terraform state file on your local machine. So that is not recommended if you are using the Terraform in your CI CD pipeline, then you should use the remote S3 backend. So for that, you can have this backend configurations like this. And here you can provide your region and your bucket name. So this bucket name needs to be created before. So whatever is your bucket name, you can put it here. So here you can see I have this bucket name created. So this is the manual thing that you have to create it or even you have the code to create these buckets automatically. It's up to you. And this is the key. So key is basically creating the folder structure inside your bucket. So here like you can see that I have ran this program before also. So in this you can have this ECS folder and then test prod. And you can see that I have this Terraform state file here, right? So here you can see like this that I ran it and it has already ECS cluster created. Okay, so let me, so this is how you can write the Terraform code and manage it for all your environments. Now we will see how we can create the GitHub workflow to run these. Okay, so this is my workflow. This is the YAML file and just to let you know, I have a different video also. If you do not know about anything GitHub Actions, so to get the basic understanding, you can follow this GitHub Actions basic video also if you have any doubts. So this is my YAML file and this is very simple where you have just Terra name and you are defining the triggers, how you want to trigger your workflow. Workflow dispatch is mostly used if you want to trigger manually also. You can define the path like only when these folders gets pushed, anything pushed on those folders, then only trigger the workflow. But for now, I have just put it everything. And this is the pull request. Here you can see your, you can set your shell bash or whatever you want. And now this is the basic job here, your basic job that is actually will do the Terraform deployment. And here I am using the concept of matrix. So this is also I explained in my previous video also, but matrix is used whenever you have to loop through things. Like in this example, I want to run the same workflow for test and prod. I don't want to have this same job and then copy 
and then create paste for production differently right i wanted to use one piece of code and iterate through so for that you can use the matrix and in matrix you can have multiple multiple loops also right so here i am doing it like this if it is test environment then use this runner if it is prod environment then use this runner and this is generally required like if you have different accounts for test and prod then you might have different runners in those accounts until you configure the cross account access right so in this example i'm just using the default runners that github provides these are not self hosted runners that i have created these are just for the testing purpose so i am just using the github runners so these are the things these are this is how basically you can use the concept of matrix there are a lot of options there if you look at their documentation there are a lot of options and here you can provide the environment variables so you need the secret access keys to access your aws accounts and you can use the like if you can click on settings there is an option of secrets and here you can define your aws access key and the secret access key and whatever secrets you have to pass you can do it like this and use it in this way okay and now once you set all these things now you have to have the code for the terraform so terraform there are default actions that you can use for the terraform so here you can see that i am using this hashicorp setup terraform like this and with the terraform wrapper you can define your terraform version also if you have the specific requirement and here you can see this is the terraform initialization so even if you do it locally you always remove the terraform directory folder so this is how you can remove it and then we are doing the initialization so now we are doing the initialization and we are using the backend config generally when you run it on your local machine you just run terraform in it and that's it it creates your backend configurations locally right but here we want to use the s3 bucket so this is how you can provide your backend config and this is how your environment will get passed on and this will use this backend configurations for your environments so this is how you will do the terraform initialization the second step is you do the plan there are other options also you can do terraform validate terraform format but in this example i'm just doing terraform init and then plan and in plan you need to pass the variable files because here we are using the variable files according to the environment so you have provided like var file equals to this so this is how you can provide the variable files and at the last step apply so in apply i don't want this to run for all my branches and all those stuff only when something push to main branch or sometimes we call it master branch then only i want to apply the changes so this is how you can apply the changes this is i have just put it because i am creating these resources and if i want to run it this command will run only when i do the branch deployment for destroy so that it will destroy everything so this is how you can do or you can create the terraform resources using github actions and the last thing is the comment so generally when you create a pr you provide some comments also on that so that also you can automate so for that there is a hmm, uh, actions for the github that you can use and with this script you can have anything right now i have just put as a i just wanted to show you how this works but uh, you could have even terraform plan in this uh, pr so that whenever your uh, team members get the pr they will see in the pr request only as a comment that what it is going to do so you can have anything whatever you want to put as a comment on your pr so this is how the workflow works now i'll show you so let me just uh, create a new branch okay so i will create a new branch create test okay so i have created the new branch and i don't have anything to change but let me just uh, change the readme file so that it will just trigger uh, the deployment so here you can see that uh, okay let me just change the branch i don't want to change in uh, test in main so let me just go to test branch 
and here I'll just change this so I'm first I have just committed directory to this so this will also trigger your actions okay because I don't have any okay uh, basically yes I have defined uh, the pull request so let me just now create a pull request okay and uh, I'm just creating the pull request here okay and uh, now if I go to actions you can see that pull request opened by this and uh, it's running on the test branch right so this will trigger it and here you can see because I'm running in a looping so this is the test and the prod and it is sequential if you want to run it in parallel you have that option too there is an option in matrix max parallel and here you can see that apply and the destroy it doesn't run because there is a constraint there is a condition if it is master or if it is destroy and in the plan you can see that it is refreshing the state because I already have the ECS cluster so it just says that uh, no changes it uh, you do not have any new changes for this right so I mean this is how it will run and here you can see the terraform initialization and it actually takes your s3 buck backend and all those stuff and now it has created the comment also so now let me go to my pull request and here you can see that github actions has provided this you can have lot of options who has created this and whatever you want to put it here you can do that okay now i can merge this pull request and once you merge this pull request you can see the workflow again ran let me see okay so generally this runs uh, I, let me just see what happens why it did not trigger okay so generally this runs so you can uh, just uh, trigger your deployment manually also if uh, you have to so this is the run workflow and uh, you can trigger it and here you can see that it shows that manual run by devops for solutions and then you will have all the changes so so basically this is how you can manage your uh, Terraform deployment using GitHub Actions and use the S3 backend so that it's easy to use for you. Thank you.